Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The FACEBO is a caliber-like device which is used to record the relationship of the patient's maxilla to the opening and closing axes of the jaw, and then to transfer this relationship by way of the maxillary master cast to the opening and closing axes of the articulator. The instruments required in the face bow transfer are first the face bow, the bite fork, the wrench which is used to tighten the stem of the face bow when uniting the fork to the face bow, a millimeter ruler, and a suitable marking pencil, in this case a number two pencil. In conjunction with these instruments, one also must use a well-constructed maxillary base plate, a base plate which is stable on the master cast and one which is stable and retentive in the patient's mouth. This base plate ends well short of the eventual periphery to which the denture will be constructed. And the reason for the shortness and the flange length for the base plate is for ease in insertion and removal of the base plate into the oral cavity. The arbitrary face bow used in complete denture construction requires three reference points. Two of the reference points are located in the region bilaterally of the temporomandibular joint and are based on anatomic averages. The third is the way that the face bow bite fork exits from the mouth in the way it is oriented to the patient's face. If one palpates beneath the skin in the region of the ear here, you'll feel this cartilaginous structure which is called the tragus of the ear. And then taking the, I'm using the felt tip pen here because it shows better on television, you can mark the inferior border to the tragus, the superior border, and the area in between which is the middle portion of the tragus of the ear. Now our posterior reference point is located on a line from the tragus of the ear to the outer canthus of the eye, and it is 13 millimeters out from the posterior border of the middle portion of the ear. And I'm gonna place a small dot here, extend that dot on this line, and then Then the line superiorly and inferiorly to, to mark the uh, posterior reference point. Again, if we check this on the line from the middle of the tragus of the ear to the outer canthus of the eye, you will see that it is approximately 13 millimeters. A similar posterior reference uh, point has been already marked and located on the opposite side in the region of the condyle. And uh, also you might place your finger over the center of that condyle and just have the patient open and close and palpate and feel the head of the condyle in the vicinity of the reference point. The third point of reference that we will use is the bite fork and the way that it uh, is oriented to the long axis of the patient's face. We take a full sheet of pink base plate wax here and very carefully pass it through the flame. We can begin to roll it into a tubular shape and attach this wax to uh, the bite fork. This will then permit us to unite the bite fork to the previously constructed base plate. The wax is, as I said, carefully softened and then it is attached to the maxillary uh, bite fork. At this point, I think it's always wise to seal the wax to the bite fork with the hot end of a number seven spatula. So we'll just flow the wax here gently to unite this firmly to the bite fork. After the wax is uh, attached to the bite fork, I think then that it um, can be readily attached to the base plate by first applying a little bit of sticky wax to the base plate. 
This makes a little better union between the pink base plate wax, the bite fork, and the base plate. Just place a small amount of the sticky wax on the base plate. Again, pass the bite fork through the flame and carefully position it in relationship to the base plate. Again, after you have positioned the bite fork to the base plate, it's always wise to seal it, to seal the pink base plate wax with the number seven spatula. You will notice that I have attempted to attach the bite fork parallel to the top of the maxillary master cast. And uh, I have already trimmed the maxillary master cast to be parallel with the remaining uh, maxillary residual ridge. Now we can seal this to the base plate and then return to the patient to view the relationship of the stem of the bite fork as it exits from the patient's mouth. There we are. Move the base plate from the master cast and return to the patient to inspect uh, the relationship of the uh, bite fork to the long axis of the face. The long axis of the face is described as a line which would pass through the bridge of the nose, the ala of the nose, and the patient's chin. And you will notice in this relationship that the, it appears as though the bite fork is running slightly uphill. So I'm going to remove that and make a slight modification and then reinsert to see if we have the uh, bite fork perpendicular to the uh, long axis of the patient's face. Again, carefully inserting it, positioning it, gently close together. And you will notice now that we do have the Per the perpendicular relationship between the stem of the bite fork and the long axis uh, of the patient's face. The face bow transfer from this point on is usually a uh, two to sometimes a three-man operation, uh, the patient being the third uh, man in the operation. And I'm going to make a slight modification to the attachment uh, area of the bite fork to the base plate by flowing a small amount of sticky wax here, and then attaching to this area two cotton rolls. Now the purpose of the cotton rolls is to provide the patient with a mechanism to close against using either the existing denture or the mandibular base plate and wax occlusal rim. In this instance, uh, we will be using the patient's uh, existing denture uh, to close against the cotton rolls. Now just close gently, please. There, and he can hold the base plate and bite fork uh, rather firmly uh, using this mechanism. We will now take uh, one end of the ear extension uh, rod for the face bow and adjust it to a setting of 65. In placing that over the one posterior reference point, we will move the other ear rod extender in until it lightly touches the tissue. And then we will read the equivalency of the ear rod extender. And in this case, it's a total of 70. Now the difference between the two being five or approximately two and a half for each side, we now can adjust the ear rod extender to approximately 67.5 on one side and lock this. This now will uh, allow us to center the face bow rather easily. At this time, it's uh, important to have an assistant available, as we have here, and the first thing I'm going to do is to first place this over the bite fork and ask the assistant to carefully position this over the posterior reference point. We will move this in until it reads 67 and a half and carefully tighten it. Again, at this point, I'll just gently firm up the locking mechanism, and the assistant and I will check very carefully to make certain 
that we are over the post here references. It's fine on this side. On this side, we'll loosen the locking mechanism and check the ear rod extender. We notice it's over the post here reference point. We now will reset this at 67.5. We now then can come around to the front here and with our wrench, we can securely tighten the bite fork to the face bow and then very carefully loosen the two extending rods, pulling them back, reaching interorally and breaking the seal and carefully removing the base plate from the patient. It's at this point that we are prepared to go to the laboratory to complete the transfer of the maxillary model to the opening and closing axis of the articulator. The first step in mounting the maxillary master cast on the articulator is to place three keys or grooves in the base of the model. The fast cut wheel uh, mounted on this lathe is a satisfactory instrument uh, to accomplish this. If you gently uh, hold the cast against the wheel, you can cut those grooves quite nicely, one in the anterior region and then one in each posterior corner. Now these keys, these keys will help attach the master cast uh, to the uh, maxillary mounting. At this time, the cast should be placed in water so that it is well wetted, which will help to attach the uh, impression plaster to the model. So we'll just place this in a bowl and let that soak for a few minutes. While we're waiting for the model to absorb water, we can begin to adjust the articulator to complete the facebook transfer. Now the first thing we should do is to make sure that all of the elements in the condylar mechanism here are tight and that the uh, vertical uh, axis here is uh, uh, zeroed and tight. Also, we should be sure that the incisal pin is flush with the upper member of the articulator, so we'll adjust that and tighten this lock nut. And at this point, you can uh, screw the pin down uh, flush with the top of the incisal pin. We also should uh, make sure that the incisal guide table is zeroed and that it also is tight. And that the other condylar mechanism uh, also is in its proper relationship. I'm going to tighten these and also tighten this. Now, at this point, we can open the articulator and uh, attach the mounting ring to the, uh, in this instance, to the upper member of the articulator. Attach that, make sure that it's snug and secure. And then for purposes of supporting the maxillary base plate and eventually the cast, uh, this little mechanism here uh, can be attached to the base of the articulator and it will serve as the supporting rod uh, for the uh, base plate and eventually the maxillary cast. So it can be positioned on the articulator and we'll adjust that after we attach the face bowl. So we now have the instrument ready to position the face bowl. The face bowl now can be again centered by uh, initially setting one of the condylar uh, uh, extension rods, at, in this instance, 70. Positioning that and reading the equivalency on the other ear rod extender. And here we are reading a figure of approximately 78. So we will adjust the difference here of eight or four on each side, permitting us to center the face bow on the articulator. There, now it is centered. We have one other adjustment that we should perform, and that is the change or the alteration of the extension of the bite fork 
in relationship to the upper member of the articulator. And as we turn the uh, mounting uh, apparatus here, we can uh, elevate or lower, whatever might be the case, the uh, bite fork or the stem of the bite fork until it is parallel to the upper member uh, of the articulator. And I'm just running this down until it lightly contacts the bench top. You will notice that the bite fork is now parallel uh, with the other upper member of the articulator. There's only one remaining thing to do, and that is to take the supporting rod that will help to support the base plate and the master cast and move it superiorly until it lightly touches the base plate and then tighten very carefully the set screw. And this will help to support the base plate and the master cast. If we now open the articulator and our cast has been soaking for a uh, period of time, we can take the wetted cast and remove it from the water and very carefully, again, place it uh, in the base plate and gently make sure that it is properly seated. And at this point, I think that we should also check to make sure that we have an adequate space for impression plaster, which in this instance, as you see, we do. And now we can begin and carefully mix a, a mixture of impression plaster to mount uh, the maxillary cast. We'll take this uh, rubber bowl and place a small amount of water into the bowl so that we can mix a rather loose mix of uh, the impression plaster. We'll add the powder uh, to the water here, and then we'll carefully spatulate that until we have a nice, uh, smooth, uh, and in this instance, a, a rather thin mix in order to uh, unite the maxillary master cast. Again, we'll carefully spatulate this until we have a nice, thin, smooth mix. And after that is accomplished, we'll take this up on the spatula and add in the center portion of the cast some of our uh, loose uh, impression plaster. And we'll carefully close the articulator, again supporting the cast, until the incisal pin uh, touches the incisal table. Now this is the initial union of the cast to the articulator, and we will begin to fill in some of these other areas uh, with impression plaster after the initial set has taken place. Again, we make sure that we have a secure mounting to the top of the ring, and then very carefully smooth the area out in the central region here and allow the impression plaster to harden. It is at that time that we will go back and we will fill in the remaining areas here to complete the union of the cast to the mounting ring. The remaining areas have now been filled in with the uh, impression plaster and you will notice they have been polished smooth with the uh, base of the master model and the mounting ring. Uh, what we like to use to uh, make that smooth is 320 grit uh, carborundum paper that is wetted. With the master cast uh, smooth and uh, attached to the articulator in this manner, uh, thus completes the maxillary face bowl transfer. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.